everyone! This week, Tara is on vacation. She's uh, traveling cross... Co- well, she just finished traveling cross country on a move from New Jersey to Colorado with three cats in a car for many days. So, um, filling in for her tonight, graciously, wonderfully giving her time to us tonight. This is uh, Kate. Kate Robinson. You might know her from uh, the YouTubes. She's the movie... That movie chick. Um, she's on... Doing all sorts of reviews and such. You should check out her YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Kate. Of course. It's my pleasure. <laughs> you say, everybody <laughs> says that before we get started with the segment. <laughs> and then the segment happens and they change their minds. I mean, I have seen the podcast, so I am I feel like I'm a little bit prepared. <laughs> a little? A little. I mean, you never know. You might shock me with one of the articles. <laughs> I have seen... Some things on this podcast. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, let me just double check because the audio setup is goofy as hell. Every she's uh, Kate sounds okay, right? Everybody, there might be exploding bull semen. That was a special week. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's get the intro going live, everybody. Each week. Catherine, Radio Dead audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, <clears throat> we're, we're kind of starting off. Uh, yeah, this this is some stuff we've seen before. Um, I, guess, I guess we're just kind of going to ease you into the horrors tonight. Um, sure. Awesome. <laughs> uh <laughs> Kalamazoo, Michigan, of all places. That's just a wonderful place. Just the sound of the name. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, sure. Um, all right. Have you ever been asleep at night and something outside happens very loud and for that split second, you have no idea what's going on? Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I live in L.A., so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that. Well, normally, you know, it's nothing. It's a backfire. It's it's something fell down. It's a garbage can. <laughs> And sometimes, um, it is a pickup <laughs> truck landing on top of your house after the driver runs away. That is a picture. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Barry County, Minnesota. A pickup truck round, wound up on top of a house near Delton early Friday morning after an eventful evening that began with the driver eluding police during a traffic stop. Michigan State Police Trooper attempted to pull over the truck's driver. Um, later, in the early hours of the morning, uh, units from the Barry County Sheriff's Office and Michigan State Police responded to a report of a pickup truck landing on the roof of a home on Oak Drive. Please identify the pickup truck as the same vehicle that had fled from a trooper hours. Okay, wait. <laughs> he actually got away, but apparently he just kept driving super fast. Just in case they catch up to him, like <laughs> they'll never find me here. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> uh, how? T- you ever seen those farmers commercials? We are farmers. Mm-hmm. That, when they they all they they give these outlandish scenarios of what could possibly, and, and you're like, no, that'll never happen. And then wake up one day, there's a truck on your roof. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, I. <laughs> Just the perspective of the picture alone, the pickup truck just looks massive. Just like of how it's kind of hanging off the edge. That's some talent. I I don't even know. I I, I, don't, I don't even know what the heck you're supposed to. I mean, what do you do? You just get up, you go outside, you look at it. How do you tow yeah. that down? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it'd be probably um a mixture of. Pick, uh, tow truck guys and you know the type that has like the crane where they're supposed to like fix wires something like that someone's going to be in like one of those buckets <laughs> oh it'd be uh. a team effort that's for sure so did he like jump out because i see the doors yep, like open he did oh, after okay. he after awesome. he crashed the truck he <laughs> ran away the incident <laughs> remains under investigation so it worked uh this this is a good technique for eluding the police um abandon your vehicle on top of someone's house they will find something. They will be less preoccupied with you. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> uh, people in the chat are saying this actually was a farmer's commercial, except the truck went through the house. 
Oh god. This this is the easy stuff. We're we're getting into the weird stuff. <laughs> Iowa and never let anyone say the Midwest isn't weird because the Midwest is is some, I I have spent some time out there. Crap is messed up. Like for example, um I don't even understand know how a, 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 an attorney would even begin to file this motion, but they tried. Kansas man has asked an Iowa judge to let him engage in a sword fight with his ex-wife and her attorney so he can, quote, rend their souls from their bodies. Like with the sword? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> David Ostrom, 40. Was it like their anniversary or something? <laughs> Uh, said in a court filing that his former wife, Bridget Ostrom, 38, and her attorney, Matthew Hudson, had, quote, destroyed him legally. The Ostroms had been embroiled in disputes over custody and visitation issues and property tax payments. Yep. I don't think the custody courts award you custody if you stab your ex-wife with a sword. No. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. He stabbed her in the soul. It didn't count. Guy stabbed me with a sword, Mal. How weird is that? <laughs> the hell? All right. The judge had the power to, quote, let the parties resolve our disputes on the field of battle legally. He keeps using that word legally. <laughs> Look, if you just keep saying something is legal, that doesn't make it happen. You can't just say legally, this is fine. No, it's not. That's not how that. Not like, it's not like Harry Potter. You can't say magic words. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> David Osh, uh, adding in his filing that trial by combat, quote, has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in these United States. Well, no, <laughs> it hasn't. No, that's like the same rule from like Airbud, where they're like, well, doesn't say dogs can't play basketball. Yeah, well, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's because nobody's going to let Trey get a dog to play basketball. Oh my god. I love how it says he wanted to secure some Japanese samurai swords. Very specific kind of combat he was going for. Like he saw one too many Kurosawa films. Oh no, this is Highlander. This has got Highlander written all over it. <laughs> oh, that too. He did have a good time on that. He's 40 years old. 1986. He was about, oh, 15. Mm -hmm. When, when mm -hmm. Highlander, yeah, th this guy's got Highlander all over Makes it. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm a little scared of people who grew up in the 80s now because now they're adults and they have all of that pop culture behind them. It's not like, you know, a bunch of Westerns and, and, and crime movies and Dragnet and stuff. Now they've got like Star Wars and Highlander. Stuff, yeah. Stuff's getting weird. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> uh. I... I, well, I, I, I... I'm... I... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's the only thing I can really sum that up to, that he's just really, really wants to be Christopher Lambert. <laughs> he wants his moment, is the thing. He wants his moment, yeah. Oh, speaking of moments, uh, this is one a guy would probably want to... Uh... we got a lot of Midwest this week. It's probably... <laughs> this is from Yellowstone, actually. So it's, it's actually a little closer your way than it is. Um... Math is hard, put it that way. Um, now, it seems it seems kind of normal to start with. Rescue team pulls man from Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Uh, rescue took four 600-foot ropes and six hours. Now, remember that. Four 600-foot ropes. That's 2,400 feet of rope. Uh, let's see, Powell, uh, yeah, a little more than a week ago, a Yellowstone National Park search and rescue team pulled a man to safety from nearly 900 feet down in the Grand Canyon. Uh, and he was Dave Christensen, 55, um, of Winnemac, Indiana, was there illegally. Uh, Yellowstone National Park officials said the rescue, difficult and dangerous. Powell said it was clear Christensen attempted to scale the cliff face all along. He had the gear, had a rope, had an ice axe. You got to get down to here's the, here's the punchline. 
Where is it? Um, he and a friend snowmobiled to lookout point where Christensen tried to rappel to the bottom while his friend waited above with a two-way radio. But Christensen made a big mistake in planning his adventure. It was 850 feet down to the river. His rope was only 360 feet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would think, like, the first thing you do if you're trying to climb down something is figure out you have enough rope. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> uh, it's, it's 350 is fine. That's fine. That's enough. I, I, parks it. You can't eyeball that shit. No. <laughs> That's fine. We'll be fine. And then they had to come and spend six hours to haul his stupid butt up. After, yeah, because he fell the rest of the way. He fell into the river. And, and then... Which I don't understand. If you get to the end of the 300-foot rope, be like, well, why not? No, you go back up. <laughs> If there's no it's not, if there's no more rope underneath you, it's not like you can pull a wily e. coyote and cut off the rope above you and tie it. But no. it doesn't work. No. <laughs> I, I, it just feels like another case of like someone who's watched too many like bad Sylvester Stallone movies or something. Oh yeah, it's like in Cliffhanger. I'll be fine. <laughs> Everybody, that, a lot of things people see people do in films. I think, oh, this is easy. Look, they did. Mm -hmm. Look, I know how to do it. I saw somebody do it in a movie. I know how to do it. Well, no, no, you don't. Different. I, I'm just amazed he's alive. I know, right? <laughs> if he wasn't, I wouldn't be talking about him. But he is, so we can laugh at him. Mm. Oh, God. Here's one for from from uh, Florida that I, I I've got to oh. get. Or to say no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And, and they have not found this guy. Where? Yeah. Th this. Where's the picture? There we go. Now everybody's calling him a futuristic thief. They, they they're calling him like, oh wow, they're they're so impressed because. He robbed a Walmart with hover shoes. Which they aren't hover shoes. They're just like, remember those hover cart, those, those hover boards that came out a while ago. They weren't hover boards. They were just, yeah, but they called them, but they weren't. This is the same thing. Florida police are on the hunt for the bold Walmart thief who rolled his way through the store on hover, on hover shoes while swiping whatever his heart desired. Reported by the Winter Haven Police Department, uh, the hover shoe thief loaded his shopping cart with a TV and several other electronics. In addition, he had various paints and a bouquet of flowers. It's like raising Arizona all of a sudden. <laughs> the re this reboot sucks. <laughs> he eventually leaves without going through the cash register and glides right out of the door without pay. I, I think kind of what happened here was just the audacity of what was going on. And it was just like, do we stop him? I, yeah. At that point, it's just so ridiculous. It's like kind of fake it to you. I mean, he's got the shoes. Is is he allowed to do? do who do we tell? I, I don't. <laughs> is there a regulation for that? I don't know. <laughs> Can we get the manager? I don't know. <laughs> of course, most of the people working at Walmart, if, if the question is, do we get the manager? The answer is, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. My shift's <laughs> over in two hours. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that is that, you know what that is? All of that, that is not my problem. I am not paid enough for that bullshit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, when I worked in retail, uh, we had a drunk woman who almost hit our enter sign coming in, and then she walked in, took a pack of uncooked sausage just started eating it and then just dropping on the floor as she went and we all looked at each other and went I'm on my break soon I'm not <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend it's not there <laughs> yeah <clears throat> I feel like that. I you just kind of let that go at that point you're like I'm not paid enough to <laughs> be worrying about no, nobody's paid. a man on a hoverboard <laughs> nobody's I mean just 
the the flowers is, are killing me. So. Oh, I love that part. Yeah, someone got in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I got you a TV and some flowers. <laughs> now let me back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, great. This. The, oh, 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 this. I, I just read the name, and this that makes this worse. Um, this is not the first time this has happened, which is quite happens quite a bit here. Um, this is, however, the first time somebody did it with this sort of name. Oh, dear. London man reports fake bomb threat to delay flight he was running late for. Quote, there may be a bomb on the plane. You need to delay it. London man running late for his flight reported a fake bomb threat to try and delay it. Rashidual Islam 32 was going to meet his fiance in Marrakesh. Stop. Right? What are you doing? Look, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying, here's where we are in this century. What are you doing? I don't even have words for that. Oh my God. It's it. All right. The entitlement. Uh, yeah. E quote, easy jet flight 8897 leaves in 40 minutes. There may be a bomb on the plane. You need to delay it. You need to stop it now. Now, here's what people think is going to happen when this happens. They think, oh, okay, well, they'll stop the plane and the bomb dog will go through and then everybody will get back on the plane and leave. No. No. Passengers and crew on the flight were evacuated, held in a gate room as authorities investigated. Um, when Islam arrived at the airport for check-in, police realized his number matched the one from the anonymous call. <coughs> wow. His own how how stupid could you actually be? You just use the same number and just hope no one notices. I mean, shit! All they could have done just be at the airport and just call the number back, and he's standing in line. His phone goes off. <laughs> his phone just goes off. <laughs> oh my god. Look, th this oh, hurts my brain. <laughs> you, oh my god, you are just. Why would you? Why in? Why? Because what happens after this? Even if you hadn't been arrested, that flight is canceled. Yeah. Everybody gets shuffled, maybe to another flight. You might get a layover, but nobody's going anywhere on that flight. That flight's what? over. Mm hmm. You can't just. It's not like you push pause on the flight. And then restart when the bot. No, 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 no. That flight's over. It's yeah, done. No. Okay, people. What a shitty the, thing to do. People in the channel are learning the wrong lesson. They're saying if you uh if you call in a bomb threat, use a burner. That's not the right lesson. <laughs> no, yeah, because I'm like you're still not making the flight anyway, and you're ruining everyone else's lives during it. Like, yeah, <sighs> no. Uh, Omega in the channel says this happens so often that star 69 the number should be the TSA's first reaction. <laughs> yeah. They'll probably find him standing in the airport. Mm hmm. Oh, it, this, this, he's not flying anymore. Why would, oh my God. Why? Uh, oh, you, they are going to investigate you forever. Mm -hmm. Even though you have done nothing wrong, you're not connected to a terrorist organization. You you stood up and you got the idiots' attention. You gave them a hobby. Don't do that. Yeah, oh my God. You are now on so many watch lists. Yep. Yeah, he was getting married. Did the fiance call it off? It doesn't say, but probably she needs to. Okay, the last one this week. Um, all right, we have had people trying to cook meth in the Walmart. We have had someone put together chemicals to make chlorine gas 
in the Walmart. This, however, this kind of tops them both. Oh, fun. Florida woman tried to build a bomb inside a Walmart using items she didn't pay for. I love how the headline has to, and she stole them too. Like, no, no, you're missing the point here. <laughs> a Florida woman is facing charges after she went to a Walmart in Tampa, got items from the shelves, and started making an explosive device inside the store. Then the woman, Emily Stollard, 37, tried to detonate it in the store. Security guard with Walmart noticed the woman roaming the aisles of the store and opening unpaid items. That included flammable materials, projectiles, and matches. Security guard called the sheriff's office, who notified a uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Officer, who was off-duty in the store. Officer security guard stopped her just before she lit a wick and detained her until deputies arrived. Deputies rushed the scene where they got reports of a customer trying to ignite a bomb inside the store. What in the world happened here? I, I'm, I'm like, just from looking at her picture, was she just like... Done? On something? Like, cause Maybe. what purpose was See, I, any of this? And that's such a close call. Like, wow, did the stars have to align to stop her? That's kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I see, I see two things in that, that, that face. Possibly one, yeah, she's on something. Or two, she's just done. That, that is the face of done. I am done. And I, I'll yeah, tell you, I mean, nothing speaks that more than ending it at a Walmart, I guess. I am not a fan of retail. I am not a fan of shopping. I hate grocery shopping. Often I've walked the aisles and gone, I hope this entire place burns to the ground. But that's just an idle thought that goes through your head when you're angry and you're frustrated and you're grumpy and you need a Snickers. No, yeah. Uh, retail employees usually feel that way. Yeah, you, you don't. Most days they work there. But I don't then take things off the shelf. I'm like, yeah, this will work out. Th this is one of those. Th All right. In state intellectually you know this is possible in a walmart because they sell everything there's oh propane yeah. over there there's lighter fluid over there there's there's pool uh chemicals which is what someone made chlorine gas out of all of this stuff is there there's nails in one side you know this is pot but just the idea of no one's gonna do that right and then someone, i mean it's also florida <laughs> it's true and my diva says prices are falling and so is the ceiling <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I, I, just, really, it's, uh, a bomb. It also said she had a child yep. with her, too. That's fucked. Dollar had a child with her at the time of the incident. She was arrested on charges of attempted arson of a structure, firebombing, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting one to tack on there. I don't think she was giving lessons on how to blow things up. No. <laughs> That's the, the kid's not going, okay, now I take the, the phosphate and I put it with the magnesium. Okay. Yep. Oh, God. Yeah, this is, welcome to Florida. This is, this is kind of yeah. normal kind of stuff down there. Oh, yeah. And creating a nuisance. No, honestly, no, they didn't do that one, though. That's one of those they tack on there when, you know. Oh, deputy said she spit on them while she was being arrested. So that, mm -hmm. that added battery law enforcement, you idiots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my. I, I guess the first thing we learned this week is, is, is normally you'd think no one's ever going to do that until they do. Yeah. Um. We've learned a fake bomb threat is not a pause button. You're going to jail. Also, don't make illegal calls from your cell phone, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. It's like he could have walked into this, to the airport with, a, with those signs like that says, It was me! Basically. Just, it, that still boggles my mind. It, I, the fact that he used his own cell phone. <laughs> I just damn. <laughs> I, I, like they, they, if you have a cell phone, you know when you call somebody, the number comes up. 
How is that not crossing your mind? We've learned that all you need to do to dazzle the staff of Walmart is to wear spinny shoes on your feet. We've learned that uh, rock climbing requires math, surprisingly. <laughs> you actually do use those things in school. They tell you you're going to use. Like, how to add. <laughs> Real basic stuff there. Um, we've learned that there is an Iowa judge who, as part of their career, has to put down denied a sword fight as part of a, a, <laughs> as a custody battle. And... Finally, we have learned, um, oh, oh, okay, in the channel, here we are, born to be single, we're the incels of the universe. Yes, that's nice, that's nice, Sam. that was a good one. And good finally, one. we've learned that if you wish to escape from the police, park your car on somebody's house, you'll probably get away. Yeah. <laughs> You're never getting insured again after that, ever. <clears throat> of course you're probably I mean you're probably set for, I mean, if you're driving in LA you're fine that's normal what parking are oh yeah parking's a bitch out here so that's I'm surprised there's not more cars and roofs like that 